Monica from Life is Art and it's Wednesday. Let's create. This evening we are going to be creating a diamond easel fold card and we are going to be using the um, Let's Party collection as well as the January stamp of the month. This is the last day that um, that you can get the January stamp of the month. So if you haven't got it yet and you um, you like the look of it, today is the day. So I've just got my video going here on the side. And if you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay. I see my mom is here. Hello, mom. Good evening. And I'm just going to put my computer up there and just check to make sure we're all in the screen looking good all righty so we're going to make a diamond easel fold card again we're going to be using this stamp set just getting myself situated now <laughs> getting everything on hand and we're going to begin with a card base of white daisy cardstock. So I've got it here on my Versamat and we're starting out with a piece that is five inches by 10 inches. Now, if you um, well, want to recreate this card, don't worry about scribbling down all the measurements because I will have those available when I post the description and everything. And when I post it on the, in the Facebook group and the Facebook page, that information will be there. So we're going to start out with a five inch by 10 inch piece. And along the 10 inch side, we're going to do a little bit of scoring. So I'm just going to place it there on my Versamat. I'm going to grab my ruler and my bone folder, and we're going to score it at two and a half inches. Just make sure we're lined up nice. Looks pretty good. We're going to score at two and a half inches and then we're going to score at five inches. So this is the center fold for the card at five inches and then our second fold there at the two and a half inch mark. Okay, so now all we need to do is to crease on those folds and we're going to fold those with the bump side to the inside. So I'm going to start with this center fold. Now this um, card is going to end up being five inches by five inches. It will not fit in a standard size envelope. You will have to make one of your own. And I was looking at the measurements and if you're the kind of person like me who makes their own um, cards for weird shape things, uh, an eight inch square piece of paper, the way I make envelopes, um, will get you an envelope <laughs> to, uh, to um, put this card into. Um, I had meant to actually grab the paper that I use for that and make an envelope this evening to show you, but somewhere in the history of um, YouTube videos, I do actually have instructions for making an envelope, I think. But uh, one of these days we'll, we'll uh, dust that off and show how I make it without any special tools, just make it. So now I fold it again on that second line. So we have our two and a half inch line and our five inch line. And now what I want to do is I want to line this end that has um, the two and a half inch line along the five inch side here. And I want to just mark the very center. So half of five is two and a half. So I'm going to mark here at two and a half inches just with my pencil. We're going to use that in a minute again because we're going to erase that mark. What we want to do, we're trying to make something that's diamond shape. And I'm just grabbing my handy dandy photo trimmer. So in order to make something that's diamond shape, we're going to need a point in the center. So I've marked the center of this five inch side and we're going to trim from this center mark to where this first um, score line is on the right hand side. And then we're going to go from the center mark to the score line on the left hand side. So that by doing that, we will make a point. <laughs> We're gonna make a point of making a point. 
So just line up that mark and that score line. Give a nice little trim. You're left with a bit of a triangle. You could probably use it for something else. And then we're going to swivel around here and we're going to line up that mark again. That center mark and my score line on this side. And now we have the point for our diamond. I'm just going to scooch those scrap pieces out of the way. Put away my trimmer and grab that pencil and just remove my center mark. We don't need that anymore. So we've got our base now made and now it's just a matter of adding all the decorating to our card. So the first thing we want is to add some fun contrasting cardstock. Because we're using the Let's Party collection, I've got a piece of uh, candy apple red and this piece is four and seven eighths by two and three eighths. Now again, I'm going to have all those measurements um, for you written down. And for those of you who um, access it solely by face uh, YouTube, I will be putting that description um, afterwards. <laughs> so we've got a uh, four and seven eighths by two and three eighths. And then for pattern paper, we've got these lovely sprinkles. This is the pattern we're gonna use um, on most of the card. And this piece is four and three quarters by two and a quarter. And we're gonna go ahead and quickly layer those together. Let me just grab my adhesive. There we go. I was just out at the grocery store doing some grocery shopping and then got home and Julia helped me unload the car or the truck and um, helped me put away some of the groceries. And then I've got some of supper already in the cooking away in the oven. <laughs> so it's been a little bit of go, go, go right till the last minute before I came in to the craft room. So I kind of have to remind myself what I'm doing. And I didn't get any adhesive out. So you saw the big reach there. I had to reach across the desk and pull it out of the bin. Usually I have it sitting here ready to go. Okay. So we're going to center this at the top of the front of our card in this nice big panel at the top. And there'll be a little bit of the white edge showing all the way around, just like that. Doesn't that look fun and festive already? And then um, we're going to have another piece of red cardstock that we're gonna attach on the front here. And this has been cut to and there's actually two of them. Let me grab the other one. This has been cut to three and a quarter inch square. So three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And there's two of them. One of them is going to go on the front and it's going to go on the diagonal like this. And that's creating our diamond for the front of our card. So what I'm gonna do, the easiest thing is just to add my adhesive right to the white point here. And I'm keeping well away from the edge because some of this white is going to show. And just go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna get my little handy dandy picker uppery for peeling the backs off of these. There we go. I'm trying to be good and throw them in the trash instead of all over my table. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and line this up. And I sometimes find that it's easier to line up something that's diagonal by putting the diagonal bit square. <laughs> Does that make sense? By putting it in, in square and then pretending that it's a square, but it ends up being a triangle <laughs> or a diamond in this case. Okay, so there's the, the first bit of the front of our card. Now this piece is going to go on the inside. So I'm gonna set that aside, but I just wanted to show you that there were two pieces that were the same. Now we also need two more squares of candy apple cardstock, and these have been cut to um, two and a quarter inch. So two and a quarter inch square. And we're gonna grab our trimmer again, and we're going to trim these in half on the diagonal. So we're gonna go from point to point, just line them up in our little trimmer. Snip. And now we have two triangles. Let me 
maybe if I move this out of the way, I won't have to fuss with it so much. And then we're going to take the second one and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to put it on the diagonal here, go from point to point, trim. And there we go. So we've got four little triangles. And then we're going to bring in some pattern paper. And this is, again, that's lovely sprinkles. And these are two inch squares. So we have two two inch squares. And we're gonna treat them the same way. We're gonna line them up and cut them from point to point on the diagonal and create two patterned triangles, which are of course going to fit right inside that contrasting candy apple cardstock. We're gonna do the same thing with the second one lining it up from point to point and we'll add those to those. Now for these pieces, it's a little bit easier to do them with some liquid glue. So let's do that. Let's add our triangles, add our pattern triangles to our cardstock triangles. We want to center those, make them as even as we can. Add some glue to the next one. There, that one's a little crooked. We want to try and keep it as straight. Oh, <laughs> that's the only problem with liquid glue. You can mush it around and get it lined up. But then sometimes if you mush too hard, you run it right out of the out of alignment. And I did that. I mushed it out of alignment. All right, next one. Line it up. I always find with triangles, um, liquid glue is easier than trying to deal with the um, with the tape, the double sided adhesive. It's just makes it quicker and there we go stick that all down give them all a good smoosh and then we can bring back in our card base and we're going to take two of those triangles and we're going to adhere them down to our base that's in behind just like that okay but I want to keep this front here I'm gonna bring in a block to hold it down nice and flat so that I get my um, my images or my pieces of paper lined up nicely. I could just try and do it on the inside, but when your card is laying flat, you want it to look good on the front, right? <laughs> so we're going to line it up with this outside bit. We want to try and have the same amount of white showing as we did at the top. There we go. One triangle. And then we're going to put the left, the right side. <laughs> I don't know my lefts from my rights. There we go. Lining that up. Lovely. Give it a little, a little squishy squish. Okay, now we can open up our, um, our card. And then we're going to add our other two pieces. And we're just going to go in the other two corners of this bottom half of the card. So when we get to the five inch um, center, we stop. So we'll just line that up like that. And the last one. There we go. Line it up. And then if we've lined everything up nicely, if, if we've done that, then our second piece of the red cardstock should fit right in there. That is our second um, three and a quarter inch square. So we can go ahead and stick that down. I always think these fun folds are, or fancy folds, however you want to say it, are kind of fun and fancy um, but once you've got the fold done it's just decorating again I'm going to move this so that it's on the square 
I'm going to have much better success lining it up if I'm trying to line up a square than if I'm trying to line up a diamond. I don't know why that is, but my brain just works better in a square. <laughs> All right, now to add a little bit of extra pizzazz here, I actually decided not to go with another pattern from this collection because a lot of the patterns are very directional. And this kind of card, you need a pattern that doesn't have a specific direction because you're gonna have to put it on an angle, right? It's diamond. So what I did was I jumped into my Irresistibles stash and I pulled out the um, Irresistibles that have the daisies all over them. So this is Irresistibles cardstock. And um, we're going to do some inking on this. So let me just grab my all-purpose mat, or the messy mat, as we love to call it. Roll that out. Cover up my Versa mat. Comes with hair and everything. <laughs> my hair. We don't have any pets. So it's my hair. And then I'm going to ink it up using, <coughs> pardon me, Sundance ink. So I've got my Sundance, I've got my blending brush ready to go. And I've got my little um, mat under there to keep it from sliding all over the place. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply a nice coat of Sundance all over our Irresistibles cardstock. I want to get a fairly dark color. So we'll just keep going in until we get it how we like it. And then I'm going to spin it around, and ink the other side, like so. There we go. Get the pressure on there with my thumb. <laughs> Okay, so that's number one. Now, the trick with the Irresistibles is that you need to have a tissue or something. I'm just using this old towel and just give it a little buff. And what that does is it removes any of the excess ink that's sitting on the embossed part of the cardstock and allows that nice white to shine through. Now, if you use a really dark ink color, um, like black or red or um, really dark blue, you will find that the white kind of gets tinted a little bit. Black usually makes it look slightly purple. Red makes it slightly pink. Obviously, blue makes it kind of bluish. So, um, you know, depending on the kind of ink and the uh, intensity of it, it can kind of tint those white marks, but that's okay. It's a look. It's a thing. And then let's go ahead... And we're going to ink this one up too, same color, Sundance. Normally when I'm ink blending, I try to put, you know, a nice light amount of ink. Today, we're going for the gusto. We want it to be yellow. Because the Let's Party collection that was the featured collection for the entire month of January is very much primary colors, bright, bold, lovely. So there we go. We've inked those up. Now I'm going to take my my towel and give this another little bufferoo here. And there we go. And then I'm going to, while we're here, clean off my all-purpose mat a little bit, just spraying with a little bit of water. And give it a little a little wash and there we go now because this is damp I wouldn't then you go ahead and do more with the um, with the cardstock I'd have to find a dry spot um, because if you're if your towel is wet when you try to do that buffing you're obviously gonna kind of peel the paper so I always use a dry tissue or paper towel or cloth to do that okay so bringing back in our card base and now we can add in our Irresistibles, lovely yellow daisies. And the other thing I liked about using this daisy pattern as, um, as, a, as an alternate pattern to the sprinkles is that the daisies are a much larger pattern. We're gonna go square again here. 
They're a much larger pattern and that's a nice contrast with that very small pattern of the sprinkles. So nice juxtaposition there. If you do all small patterns, it gets too busy and overwhelming for your eyeballs. Your eyeballs need a break from the busy sometimes. And then we're going to do the same one on the inside. Put it square again. Just works better. And stick that down. And now we need to add our sentiment and things. And that's where we're going back to that stamp of the month, which is called Looking Forward. And I've got a couple pieces of Bluebird here, which is that nice blue um, coordinating color. I've got my Versamark ink. I've got my white uh, embossing powder. First off, we're going to use our anti-static pouch and just give this a little, a little love with the anti-static pouch. And that helps to take static off the paper so that our embossing powder only sticks where we want it to stick. And not just everywhere because it's staticky. All right, now I forgot to get a scrap paper for embossing. So let me grab this. And we're going to stamp a couple of things. We're going to stamp the big scallop circle that says the best is yet to come. And we're going to stamp that with the Versamark. We're going to center that on this piece of paper. I'm just bringing it closer to me so I can see what I'm doing. We're going to fussy cut this out. So as long as it fits on the piece of paper, we're good. There we go. And let's add our white embossing powder to this. Just give a little sprinkle and then tip, tap, tap. Looks good. The best is yet to come. I'm just going to set that off to the side there. And I think I can probably stamp this one over here. <laughs> and then I've also got this one that says beautiful new beginnings. It's always a good sentiment at the beginning of the year, but think about people who are starting a new job, starting a new school, um, getting married, graduating from school, all those fun things. Those are all beautiful new beginnings. And I'm just going to use my tweezers to help me with this. Grab that. And we're going to sprinkle on some embossing powder. And we're going to tip and tap. That looks pretty good. Doesn't look like we picked up too much extra. I'm going to set that to the side. Cover up our ink. We're going to use our scrap paper as a funnel to get our embossing powder back in the jar. There we go. And put the lid on it. Nothing worse than spilling your embossing powder. All right, let's grab our heat tool. We're going to use our tweezers for this because I cut this pretty close to the size. This particular piece was three and three quarters by one and a quarter to put this sentiment on. And then we just hold it up off our work surface so that we don't um, damage, you know, the finish on our table or anything like that. It also lets the heat from the heat gun to swirl around the paper. And that actually helps it do its transition a lot quicker. There we go. Going all the way across. We also point our heat tool away from our hand. This tweezers help with that. There we go. And let's grab this other one. The best is yet to come. That's a nice hopeful sentiment, isn't it? And it's got cute little butterflies on there. One flying down at the bottom, one flying across the top with a little the little trail, those, tra those trail lines always remind me of Peanuts, you know, Peanuts cartoon and Woodstock and all his little, um, all his little bird friends. 
when they would flutter and, you know, go upside down and every which way. I mean, their heads are 99% of their body, so it's a wonder that they can even fly, right? So I'm just um, rubbing these on my pants <laughs> to get the little bits of the anti-static pouch off. And, you know, it's a very technical business around here <laughs> when you just rub everything on your pants. But there we go. Our best is yet to come. And we're going to do some fussy cutting on this. I'm going to actually cut it fairly close to the white line. Ooh, that felt like my power did a little flicker flicker there. Did you see that? A little blink. Maybe it was just me. Maybe I blinked. But it had that feel. Hopefully my power doesn't go out. Um, the video will st still keep going, though because um, that is on my phone, so it's got a battery. However, <laughs> our modem may not keep going, <laughs> or whatever it is that connects us to the internet. All right, so hopefully we don't have any troubles with that. So far, so good. I still see the video playing over on my laptop. So we're just working our way around. We are, le I am leaving a halo of the blue, but it is very, um, very close to the white line. And just going around. I thought this was nice to add a punch of that blue to this card. And I think that will help to ground the sentiment and draw your eye towards it. Um, even with all of the fun sprinkles and daisies and all the patterning that's going on with the triangles. Um, having this punch of blue with the white heat embossing will, will help the sentiment to stand out. Plus, this is going to be an easel card, and that's going to help things stand out too, pardon the pun. All right, we're just about there. Now, this um, particular stamp of the month was available with a thin cut, and the thin cut, um, one of the thin cuts anyway, uh, cut out that buckle <laughs> in a scallopy way. However, I did not pay the extra dollars for that. Um, so I just cut it by hand. So I'm going to do a little tiny little dovetail on here. So a snip in the center and then from the bottom point to that snip. And then from the top point to the top of that snip, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, snip in the center. And then from the top point to the top of that snip and the bottom point to the top of that snip. And there we go. Scooch away all those little scrappy bits and bring our card base back in. Now to help make these stand out even more, um, in case we need even more, we're going to use some faux tape. Oops, look at that, one of our scrappy bits hung on. And we're going to add some foam to the back of this. Just a few snippies. One, two, three. And then we can go ahead and stick that on the front. And I'm actually going to use my tweezers to help me with this because I want to try and get it straight. And if I got my big fingers in the way, I won't be able to see what I'm doing. So, I'm going to come up, oops, helps if you hold on to them. I'm going to line that up and stick that in the center like that. There we go. And then on the inside, we want to add this, and we're going to pop this up with foam tape, and there's a method to that madness because this is going to be the thing that keeps our easel standing up. So we need to have some height to it so that the point of the front of our card has something to tuck against. It's sort of our, our door holder, if you want to look at it that way. So let's remove the backing off of this. And I'm just using the regular 3D foam tape, not the thin. There we go. I'm gonna use my tweezers for this one too. Hopefully get it somewhat straight. And that looks good. Stick that down. 
Now, I wanted to add a little bit of bling to this, a little bit of something, something. So I've got my black and white dots. And we're going to use the white dots on here. And actually, the white hearts. Because we're talking about the best is yet to come. So let's grab some white hearts. Scooch those out of the way. Let me see. Let's grab a medium. Heart. Maybe we'll stick it right here, right in the center at the bottom, like that. And then we'll grab a big one, stick it off there to the side. And then the tiny little one, let's add it along the, the little inside rim there of the scallop as well. So there we go. And then, of course, this is a diamond easel fold card. So the easel is that we're going to lift this up and we're going to tuck the point right in behind that beautiful new beginnings inside sentiment and then it'll stand up like that that's a nice profile and this is also a nice design if you're thinking about graduations because it kind of has that same shape of you know the one of the mortarboard hats i think that's what they're called and um so that is a fun little touch now if you felt that you wanted to decorate the inside of this as well, you could always use the same size um, pieces as you did on the front. I think I kind of like having it just as the white because um, it just sort of disappears visually. Um, and then, of course, to write your message, you can use the back side of this or you can just use the whole back of the card to write your message. So there we have it. Our diamond easel fold card, we started out with our white daisy base. We did our scoring and our trimming to create this point on the front. Then adding in our candy apple card stock in that beautiful sprinkles pattern paper from the Let's Party collection. And then, of course, inking up some daisy irresistibles for a larger pattern. Adding it also to the inside. Then our white heat embossing on the bluebird cardstock using that stamp of the month for January available only for today because <laughs> today is the last of the month and creating that beautiful card a diamond easel fold card I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that come together and if you give this card style a try be sure to take a photo of it and pop it in the comments in the group so that uh, they can see what you created all right have a wonderful evening and we will see you again soon because tomorrow is the beginning of our crop for the month of February and we are doing a chocolate tour of Belgium. That sounds perfect for February, doesn't it? All right. Have a wonderful evening. See you soon. Toodaloo. Bye.